I don't wish to die for such worldly reasons. It is simply unacceptable for a saint of the Lord to look like some kind of terrible hellspawn. With every moment, I grow more impure. Is this another trial, O Father? Uh, you're a damned witch wearing a saint's skin. So that's what he meant. I do rather resemble a witch. Not a servant of the Lord, but a disciple of the devil. No, I cannot cry. I must not lament of my own misfortune. I must not feel sorry for myself. My tears, a saint's tears, should only be shed for others. My darling little saint, instead of singing a lullaby, I will tell you a story. The story of the day you first graced this earth. On that day, I told the village a very important secret, that I was visited by an angel of the Lord, and that I was with a child, though I had known no man. The other villagers mocked me, called me a liar and a madwoman, but I did not relent, for it was the truth. And then, when you let out your first cry, Rain clouds suddenly began to form in the sky, and the land was blessed with rain after many months of drought. The clouds, they were drawn here by your voice, my dear. A gift from your father, the Lord God. No longer did the villagers call me a liar. They believed in me, and they believed in you. I saved everyone? Yes, yes you did, my little saint. And you will continue to deliver people from their suffering. Did I deliver you too, Mother? Of course, of course you did, my dear. I'm glad. You're the daughter of a charlatan. A virgin birth, ha! Huh. A load of lies, every damned word. The rain, nothing more than chance. If you really are the child of God, then perform a miracle for us. Pay that crude man no mind, my dear. I know that you are the daughter of God, and that's what matters most. I can hardly believe there are those who are still not convinced. So, what are you waiting for? You can't do it, can you? You're a family of liars. Uh, wait, Morgana. You mustn't get near that boorish blasphemer. Got something you want to say, kid? Well, go right ahead. I'm all ears. Miracles. Yeah? Miracles are neither magic nor parlor tricks. They are realized through the power of faith. What now? You have no place demanding God prove his own divinity. It is the height of arrogance. You have blasphemed. Repent of your sins. Trying to talk your way out of lies now, are you? I'll admit, your charlatan mother trained you well. You put on a pretty convincing act, girl. You can't perform miracles. All you have are excuses and thinly veiled reasons why you won't. But until you own up, I won't stop spreading the real word. That your mother's pulling the wool over everyone's eyes. Very well. I will perform a miracle. Oh ho ho. Morgana, you can't. Do not worry, mother. I am the daughter of God, right? I... My father will not forsake me. So what kind of miracle are you going to perform for us? And just so you know, whatever you do, it better be convincing. No guessing the weather this time. Blood is impure, yes? What? That is why we drain some of our blood when we are sick, and why we remove the blood from animals before we eat them. Right. So if I were to make blood pure and clean, would that be a miracle? Would it? I guess it would. But that's impossible. You can't do it. Okay, then. Let us go visit the elderly woman on the village outskirts. Oh, God. Oh, God, help us. Good afternoon, sister. How are you feeling today? 
If it isn't our beloved saint, how very kind of you to pay this old woman a visit. Please, stay in bed. I know you are very ill. You must rest. Oh, heavens no. That would be dreadfully rude of me. The rain you brought six years ago saved my family's lives. I am more thankful than you can imagine. And I, wouldn't, and I would like to show my gratitude. Look at this hag. Her goddamn memory is starting to go. If you are going to be disrespectful, then please wait outside. I do not want your profanity contaminating the sacred rite. Otherwise, stay quiet if you wish to see the miracle being performed. Oh, beautiful saint, please, allow me to kiss your feet. Thank you, my sister. That will suffice. I am here to perform a miracle for you. For me? Yes. You have always believed in me, your faith never wavering. Six years ago, the whole village acknowledged me as the daughter of God. But as you can see, there are those whose faith is not as strong as yours. How terribly tragic. That it is. But fear not. For as long as there remain those with faith as strong as yours, a few unbelievers will not weaken my power. For faith is the path to salvation. Yes, yes it is. In celebration of your six years of unfaltering faith, I have decided to perform another miracle for you today. I ask you to do as I say and know that I love you dearly. Of course. My beloved sister, partake of my blood. Hey, did you hear the news? That lady is back on her feet again. Ran to her down in the fields and about jumped out of my skin. We're going around as though we're the saints work. Here she made her drink her blood. Drink her blood? She's the daughter of God. Her blood ain't dirty like the rest of us. It's got real power. I guess what they said is true. She really is the child of God. Yep, we got ourselves a real genuine saint here. Not many people can say that. No, there's no way. It's not possible. It can't be. There he is. There's the bastard who dared insult our saint. Get him. We'll put his head on a pike. Show everyone what happens when you disrespect our saint. Stop this at once. Our saint. Please, let that man go. The Lord teaches us to be kind and forgiving of one another. It does not please him to see man fighting man. But he insulted you, our saint. He called you the daughter of a charlatan. Everyone makes mistakes. I bear no grudge against him for a momentary lapse in judgment. I simply pray his eyes have been opened to the truth. I do not wish to see him punished. I forgive you. Thank you. Thank you. I was wrong. You are a saint. Never again will I call you a liar. I am your faithful servant, my beloved saint. Your devotion is truly honorable. I have returned, mother. Oh, welcome back, my dear saint. Everything will be fine now, mother. The entire village acknowledges me as a saint. We need not worry about any unbelievers. And they will show you the respect you deserve as well as the mother of God's daughter. No one will ever call you a charlatan again, mother. Th that's good to hear. Thank you, Morgana. It's still night. I'm thirsty. I'll go get some water. What did I... this? Mother's still awake? Who is she talking to? Herself? Oh god, what did I bring into this world? She scares me sometimes. When I look into her eyes, when I hear her voice, I feel like my soul is being sucked out of my body. She's a girl of barely six years, yet she terrifies me. I'm beginning to think she really does have some kind of strange power that allows her to manipulate, to control people. What I'm not sure of is whether or not it's truly a holy power. Is she really a saint? 
my heart tells me she's something else. What horror have I wrought upon this earth? You know as well as I do, God, that nothing divine could possibly grow in my womb. Are you punishing me, God, for the sins I committed that night years ago with that vagrant? I'm dreaming. This is all a bad dream. Mother would never say such things about me. It's just a dream. Good morning, my darling little saint. Is something the matter? You look vexed. Mother, last night... Did something happen last night? No, nothing happened. Mother, I've always been a saint, right? From the day I was born. What's gotten into you, my dear? Of course, you are the daughter of God. Nothing will ever change that. Thank you. So it was all a dream. I should just forget all about it. I almost forgot. I have something for you. I'm sure you'll love it. Hmm? For your sixth birthday. It's not much, but will you wear it? What is it? It's a little brooch. You can use it with a shawl or cloak. It's a butterfly. Butterflies are said to be God's messengers, so I thought it would fit you nicely, my dear. It's so pretty. Hmm? I mustn't allow myself to be taken in by shallow worldly beauty. I am not an ordinary little girl. Father would be greatly disappointed in me if I were to behave like one. Thank you very much, Mother. Your gift means a great deal to me. Of course I will make use of it. You're quite welcome. It's hard to believe you're only six years old. What was that, Mother? Nothing. Before I forget, after what you did the other day, people have begun asking about you having performed miracles for them, too. But you're still so young. I'm not sure it's wise for you to go around giving out blood to everyone who asks. No, it's fine. I will do it. It is my sacred duty as a saint to put those in need before myself. Even if it means cutting yourself up every day, I will accept the pain gladly. It is a symbol of the good work I do in my father's name. I see. Well, you've made up your mind, it seems. So I'll support you in any way I can. Yet another busy day. It's been three years with no end in sight. We're starting to see more and more travelers from faraway lands. People have even set up trading posts in the village. Yet not a single coin comes our way. We're losing money every day. Morgana. What is it, Mother? I must prepare for my next blessing. Why must you hand out miracles for nothing? Why would you even ask such a question, Mother? We're barely holding on as it is, my dear. It's not wrong to expect a little remuneration for our services. No, Mother, it is wrong. Miracles are not to be bartered for. God the Father does not charge for his miracles. So why should we when I am only borrowing his power? Listen to me, Morgana. Every time you give someone a blessing, you're hurting yourself. If not for the miracle itself, you still deserve some degree of compensation for the pain. I know you're concerned for me, Mother. And I appreciate it very much. But I'm happy with the way things are. I'm happy to be able to help others with my Heavenly Father's power. A power you won't have much longer, my dear, if we can't afford to keep ourselves fed. I'm a saint, aren't I? Yes, you're my sweet little saint. God will not forsake his saint. No matter how difficult it may get, he will always provide me a way to continue doing his work. And you're the mother of that saint, aren't you? Yes, that's right. I conceived you untainted by the hands of man. Then you must respect his will as well, mother. It must be our highest priority. You're right. I was wrong, my dear saint. Mother, mother, 
You agreed with me. You said I was right. So why are you taking money from that man? Mother. Why? I mustn't let myself cry. I must always stay strong. I must endure his trials. My saintly grace must not waver. Father would be greatly disappointed in me. And then, I would have nowhere to call home. My entire head is throbbing. What a wonderful day to start the day. I'd like to sleep in for another 6 or 12 hours, but I still have things to take care of after yesterday. First, down to the pub to talk to the gang. I, I drink way too much. Dear God. Jacopo, Jacopo, I need your help. I can't carry <laughs> I can't carry run out all by myself. All right, all right. I'll drag them onto the streets. Please don't shout, though. My head hurts enough as it is. Thank you. I said stop shouting. I guess I'll start with them. Good morning, friends. It's the big guy from last night. Name's Grecian. Try not to forget it, because you'll be seeing a lot of me. Which reminds me, I never got your name. I'm just a trifling little flower. My name is important, but if you lend us a hand, that would be lovely. A hand with what? I'm just here for the booze. Haven't you had enough? Not even close. Well, there isn't anything left, or did you forget? The two of you, last night, drank the whole town dry. We're just going to be a plain old restaurant for at least the next few days. Oh, well, that's a crying shame. And whose fault do you think that is? How many more trips is this going to take? They're all still out like rocks. Hmm? Oh, I thought they erected a new wall there for a second, but it's just you. Just so we're clear, since there wasn't any real resolution last night, you passed out first, which meant I... Hey, 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 top of the morning to you, Jacobo. What a beautiful morning it is. You seem to be doing quite well. What happened to the aggressively competitive creation from last night? I had you all wrong, Jacobo. What? I had you pegged for, <laughs> for the stick up your ass... Wow. I had you pegged for the stick up your ass rich boy kind of fella, but you drink like a real pro. True measure of man is how well he holds his booze. And you proved yourself. You're one hell of a man. Oh, sure. Psh, please give me a hearty hell yeah, would ya? Don't tell me I was wrong about being wrong about ya. I'm just not in full capacity at the moment. It's taking me a little longer than normal to process. Hey, who? Point is, you got my seal of approval. We helped each other out back at the Lord, at Lord Asswipe's manor, but now we're comrades, partners in crime. Hold up. What? You want to be partners? I never said that. You make it sound like you're planning on staying, though. I most certainly do. You were one of the Lord's slaves. You know, the slaves who incited the revolt. It's not safe for you to stay here. If someone were to identify you, you'd be dead and... Life's too short to quibble over shit like someone might be trying to kill ya. It's hardly quibbling. There's a reason we had all the other slaves transported to different cities. Trust me, I know it's ain't safe for me to stick around. But I want to be here when that horse son finally gets what's coming. Like hell, I'm bailing before his head's on a pike. Okay then. As long as you're aware of the risks, that's your choice to make. In that case, I'm glad to have you. The addition of such a valiant comrade should prove quite inspiring to the rest of the gang. You're damn right it will. Should have just said that to begin with. Skip all the way, also the not safe nonsense. 
Besides, everything you said applies the same to you. As far as anyone in that matter is concerned, you're a slave as much as me. And your infiltration job didn't exactly have you laying low. They don't recognize you. Fair enough. I haven't heard of any wanted posters going up yet, but you're right. It's best to remain cautious for now. Though as long as we keep to the slums, we should be relatively safe. For the time being. As amusing a thought as that is. We're safer in that solace dump than the city proper. Indeed. But the gang has eyes and ears covering the entire district. If someone who doesn't belong shows up, word will spread quickly. So if the Lord's Guards try and slip in, their cover will be blown just like that, eh? Precisely. Which isn't to say it's a good part of town, of course. But we have more than our fair share of hooligans. You just have to be able to protect yourself. Which I doubt will be an issue for you. Hell yeah! Bring on the pickpockets! I'll rob every last one of them blind, maybe even literally. I'm glad he's on our side. Well, if you're going to be staying here, I should probably show you more than just our club of choice. We'll need to find work as well. Not that that should prove any trouble. With your muscle, you can choose pretty much anything. A bodyguard, a carpenter, a metal worker, whatever you like. But first... Could I ask you to help me get these dolts outside? Aye aye, where do you want me to toss them? Be gentle with them if you would. They are ours for what it's worth. Good lord. Between cleaning up the pub and showing grace in our own town, there was most of my day. Brothel's probably open by now. Through the back entrance it is. Yesterday, um, what about yesterday? 
Thank you for rescuing me. What? Right, that. No, no, don't mention it. It was nothing, really. That's not what you said last night. Oh, come on, just let me be humble, would you? Anyway, uh, I wasn't expecting that. I was ready myself for another argument. I also wasn't sure how much of what happened you even remembered, with how hysterical you got. I was not hysterical. My arm begs to... My mind was clear almost the whole time. I remember everything. First a slave, you saved my life from the wicked lord. I'm not actually a slave, but details, details. You took me by the arm, put me on your back, and fled from the lord's manor. That I did. I was a little hazy for some of the trip, but by the time you reached the poor quarter, my mind had cleared up almost entirely. What? My consciousness had returned by that point. Oh? You brought me to this brothel, and yes, at first I was frightened, because I believed you meant to have me become a whore. But that is the one and only instance of me last night you could describe as hysterical. I... I remember everything. Quite well. Thank you. Okay, then. Fair enough. You're right. I can't tell if she's sincere or just trying to convince herself. But she seems unusually repulsed by the idea of her losing her cool. She's not entirely right, but she's not entirely wrong either, so we'll let her have this one. In any event, you've recovered well enough to hold a conversation, which is great to see. What... what do you mean to do with me now? Better question, what do you want to do? I... Alright, well... Here's an idea. If you don't have anything... You can stay here until you're all the way back on your feet. Maria's already set aside that room for you. You, you want me to stay in this vile gathering place of sinners? You do realize who you're talking about, right? Those vile sinners are the ones who took you in. Who agreed to look after you. They're no different than you or me. Just doing what they must to get by. I am not like them. You're right. They don't look down on others for their line of work. At the very least, try to keep your callous prejudice against prostitutes to yourself when they're around, would you? Why, it is my sacred duty to spread the word of God. Indulging in carnal pleasure is a sin, no matter the reason. Prostitutes are filthy, tainted women. Jeez, did all that blood the Lord took cause your damn heart to shrivel up? In what world is it reasonable for you to go to up to women offering you sanctuary and call them to their faces sinners? Show them some gratitude, damn it! You are the one who brought me here. I never asked them to do anything for me. Oh, fine. Whatever, if you're that opposed to staying here, then go. Get the hell out. You don't deserve their hospitality. Go off and preach the word of God and call everyone sinners. I expect someone will find you dead on the side of the road in less than a fortnight. Very well. Thank you for yesterday. And farewell. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Yes? Are you insane? You're not supposed to actually go. You're the one who told me to leave. I just... Uh, off to a great start with that three years of ice-breaking, Jacopo. She's been through hell. You know that. I'm sorry. I take everything back. That was extremely childish of me. So please reconsider. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night knowing I chased you out. You cannot seem to make up your mind, can you? It was a heat of the moment thing. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. I don't actually want you to leave. Say that. No reason. 
I'm simply saying the first thing that came to mind. Don't tell me you think that I have unscrupulous tastes like Maria seems to believe. Let me make this perfectly clear. I will not lay a finger on you. You're just a child, for God's sake. Now, sit down. Well, look at that. I thought I'd have to fight her on this. Is something the matter? I... I never told you to undress. Were you wanting to apply the, the ointment to my clothes, then? Good point. That, that wouldn't help very much, would it? God damn it, Yakubo, calm the hell down. Are you trying to make yourself look like a liar? She just caught me off guard, that's all. The girl quietly disrobed, then knelt down. She had been naked when I saved her from the Lord, so it wasn't like this was my first time seeing her unclothed. But that was in the middle of a revolt. I didn't exactly have time to get a good look. She was almost frightfully scrawny, her arms barely any bigger than the bones within. Her skin was so pale I could see the blue veins running beneath it. And then, of course, there was the crisscrossing web of scars. Each one stood out clearly against her pale skin. The scars covered her whole body, front and back. I could hardly find a patch of skin that hadn't been desecrated. Looking at her, I was gripped with a mix of burning rage and bitter sadness, neither of which I had a source of relief for. But the most upsetting thing was how she just sat there, exposed, completely emotionless. Quite a change from how she behaved last night. Today, I'm the one doing all the shouting. Almost feels like I'm looking at a lifeless puppet. I scooped up some of the ointment with my fingers and gently rubbed it across her wounded flesh. Every time my hand made contact, she shuddered, but she never recoiled or objected. Though it felt less like she was willingly accepting my aid, and more like she was simply enduring, waiting for it to be over. It was almost silent in the room, save for the cries and moaning that made its way through the walls. St. Nick and a brothel, a strange man brought medicine on her. I can only imagine how unpleasant that must be, considering how devout she seemed to be. She was probably doing everything in her power to cut herself off from the whole experience. I wondered if perhaps she might one day come to realize that we were not trying to insult or demean her, and that we were simply concerned for her, that we wanted to give her a place she could feel safe. So is this all the Lord's doing? You don't have to answer if you're not comfortable. Except for my arms, yes. Someone else did your arms, then? No, I cut them myself. You... I thought suicide was a sin. Is self-mutilation allowed, then? I'm not sure what the rules on that are. You, uh... You have a lot to live for. And that was about the extent of our conversation as I applied the ointment. I couldn't come up with any small talk, and I didn't really want to press any further about her scars or her time with the Lord. So I quietly worked, and she quietly let me do my work. By the time it was all over, I was exhausted. I felt like it had taken more out of me than the couple hours I had spent dragging unconscious drunks from the pub. When I told her I was finished, she let out a sigh of relief, the first sign of emotion I had seen from her since we began. Thank you. Wait, we're not quite done. Still have to take care of your face. No, I'm fine, thank you. I beg to differ. If anything, you should be most concerned about your face. Now come on, look at me. Do I have to? Well, yeah. It'd be kind of silly to do everything but your face. I, I can do it myself. Sure, yeah, not happening. I'm going to finish what I started. Why can't I do it myself? Because my gut tells me you'll slap a little on and call it done. I want to make sure it's taken care of properly. So look at me. Show me your face. Fine. It was bizarre. How she had so little hesitation exposing her naked body, yet vehemently resisted letting me see her face. With anyone else I knew, it would be the other way around. The wounds on her face.
face seemed to hold much more significance to her than those on the rest of her body. When she asked me to kill her yesterday, it was immediately after seeing herself in the mirror. But if the marks on her face were that upsetting, wouldn't she want them to heal? So why is she fighting me about it? Did she have some other reason to hide her face from me? Whatever it was that drove her actions, I couldn't make any sense of it. Let me know if it stings. Relax, I won't bite. You weren't this tense when I was applying the ointment to the rest of you. Just get it over with. Alright, alright. You know, I just realized, I don't know your name. Would you mind telling me? No? You won't tell me? Well, in that case, I'll just have to come up with something to call you myself. I'm serious. I'll pick the first thing that comes to mind. There's still time. You just have to tell me your name. Okay, then. You had your chance. Allison, it is because you bite like an alley cat. I'll tell the girls here to call you that, too. Please don't. Oh, finally, you speak. If you're not happy with the name, tell me what to call you. You have until the count of three, and then you're Allison for good. One, two, three. Hmm? Hmm, isn't your whole name, is it? Huh, so you're hmm. I can understand being a little embarrassed about that. It's not my place to talk, I know, and I mean I will, but that's a very, uh, unfortunate name you were given. That's not my name. It's Morgana. And that wasn't so hard, was it? It's a nice name. Morgana. I like it. Also, it reminds me of my homeland. Your homeland. Yeah. I mean, I hardly remember anything about my childhood anymore. Couldn't even tell you the name of the country. But I have these vague memories of how the language sounded. In your name, it doesn't sound like a name native to those parts. It sounds like something that would fit right in with those memories of my homeland. I'd wager a guess you probably come from the same part of the world as me. If you go back far enough, you might even find we share ancestors. But who knows? I... How do you like that? Feeling a little sense of kinship? The very thought, the thought very much displeases, displeases me. Well, okay then. Be a grouch. I'll let it slide, though. Getting your name out of you put me in a good mood. It's nice to formally make your acquaintance, Morgana. My name's Jacopo. Hey, Morgana. One day, I'll show you the world. What? There's so much more out there than this tiny little corner of Earth we're riding away in. More than you can possibly imagine. I'm gonna go out into the world, experience true freedom. And I'm going to bring you with me. So try to stay positive. Once you see for yourself how much bigger the world out there is, how different every region and its people are, it might change your, your perspective on things a bit. It might even help you forget some of the crap you've been through. Alright, now I'm done. That ended up taking pretty much all the ointment. I'll have to go buy some more. Well, I should probably get going. Will you be alright on your own? I would much prefer it, in fact. Alright, alright. Sorry to be such a nuisance. See you again tomorrow. My whole body is all slimy. After the slave man left, I retreated to a corner of the room, sat down, and pulled my knees up to my chest. Through the walls, I could hear men and women sinning, so I plucked my ears in an attempt to block out the vile noise. It was filthy here. And if I remained in this place too long, it would probably taint my soul. I needed to get out of here as soon as possible. But I couldn't bring myself to leave. My body refused to cooperate. 
Just thinking about going out there into the slums all alone sent uncontrollable shivers down my spine. I was the daughter of God. What did I have to fear? Such worldly emotions were unbefitting of a saint. I was pitiful, pathetic, and I hated it. I have nothing to fear. God will always lead a saint to where he needs her most. And as long as I continue performing miracles, people will acknowledge me as the true daughter of God. I have nothing to fear. You're a damned witch wearing a saint's skin. Will they, though? Will anyone look at me and see a saint? I can hardly see a saint in this face. The Lord and his guests with their revulsion, their fear, that was the appropriate reaction. I was repulsive. Not somebody to be welcomed with open arms. Saints and angels were always spoken of as beautiful, while demons and witches were spoken of as hideous. Any miracles I performed would be seen as the work of the devil, not God. But it didn't matter. It was my sacred duty to offer a helping hand to anyone in need, no matter how much persecution I suffered for it. My heart was resolute, but my head is all muddled. I can't stand this. One day, I'll show you the world. And thinking about the slave man only made an even bigger mess inside my head. It wasn't all unpleasant, though. He didn't push me away because of how I looked. He treated me like an ordinary girl. Not a witch. And not a saint, either. And besides, I was being disrespectful. I know that. He was well within his rights to be angry. He could have let me go, but he didn't. He got angry, but he told me to stay. Put a ointment on me. Smiled, even. A very curious man, indeed. And then there was what he had said about his homeland. Just because my name reminded him of where he came from didn't mean I came from there as well. Never mind that nonsense about us sharing ancestors. I had no bloodline to trace back. My mother conceived me without knowing man. And my father resided in the heavens above, the Lord God. The very idea that we shared blood was absurd. And yet... What if, somewhere on this earth, there are people who share my blood? Who feel what I do? Who think what I think? Who see the world the same as me? What if somewhere like that really does exist? That would be very... So very... And time flows of her own onward, carrying those two and... Carrying those two and a half years forward, I think that said.